Good evening, Algebra 2s. It's not quite so late night this time. I was uh, really tired when I made your previous video. I really hope that I did not leave out too many details. I feel like there might have been one or two, but we're going to go ahead and go over any of those issues we might have with our classwork, our warm-up um, tomorrow when we get to class. So now we're going to talk about quadratic equations um, and then um, consequently quadratic functions as well. So here's an example of a quadratic equation right here, 5x squared minus 3x plus 3, and it's the second degree that makes it quadratic. And when we learn more about polynomials, we'll name other polynomials, but right now we'll just stick with quadratic being degree of 2. Just um, consequently, if we think about y equals 3x plus 5, this is what we call linear that's a linear function, so that is something to think about there, linear function. Okay, but that's that's not what we're talking about right now. We're talking about quadratics, right? So the name quadratic comes from quad, uh, meaning square, because the variable is squared, and we say it's quadratic because it has a degree of 2. Now, if you want to turn, into a quad, turn it into a quadratic function, take that 0 and replace it with the letter y or an f of x, and if you do that, you have a quadratic function. Okay, so it turns into a function you can graph. And that's something that we will practice with in class. The same transformations that work for the absolute value graph work for the basic parabola, that is the basic quadratic function. Okay, the simplest quadratic function, I changed it from equation to function, because technically now that we've um, you know put it in function notation, that, ooh, I didn't mean to move that, sorry about that. Let's fix what I'm doing here. Now that we put that in functional notation, it's a function, and the graph is pretty simple. The graph of that quadratic function is a basic parabola. So we see it as the U-shaped. It does keep going forever in both directions. You found the domain and range of some of these with your classwork, your warm-up last time. And we're going to talk more about the parabola in class. We'll do some transformations of that parabola. But instead, I want to keep talking about quadratic equations and their different parts and different things we can do with them and then talk about solving quadratic equations. So, continuing on. Okay, this is the standard form of a quadratic equation. ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. And in that equation, a, b, and c are known values. They're constants. A is not allowed to be 0. If A is 0, then you don't have an x squared term, and therefore it wouldn't be a quadratic equation. So that's the standard form of a quadratic equation. We do also have something called vertex form. Vertex form looks like this. Oh, I already messed up. Let's try that again. x minus h, the quantity squared, plus k. We're going to learn how to take a standard form equation and turn it into this vertex form, but in this vertex form, hk is actually the vertex of the parabola. And the a is the number that determines the stretch or shrink, just like in the um, absolute value graphs. And, I and that's something we're going to talk about in class um, with the vertex of the absolute value graphs is something you can actually read right out of the equation, just like this equation with the quadratic. Okay, so, so we have standard form up top, standard form up here, uh, uh, find my writing tool, standard form there, and this again is what we call vertex form. Okay, and for right now, I would be presenting you with one or the other. We will learn how to move them back and forth between one another. Okay, next. Here are a couple more examples of quadratic equations. First, we have 2x squared plus 5x plus 3 equals 0. So in this one, your coefficient of x squared, uh, the coefficient of your quadratic term is 2, coefficient of your linear term is 5, and your constant is 3. A second example here, we have x squared minus 3x equals 0. This one is a, it says a little bit more tricky, it's not really tricky, but you do have to recognize that again we have a quadratic term and that the a value of that is 1 because we can say 1x squared, that we have a linear term and that the b value there is negative 3 because it's a minus 3x, and that because you don't have a c value at all, that c is just equal to, to 0, and that's okay. C can be equal to zero. And then this third example is a little on the goofy side. It's just linear. Oops, this one's not quadratic because it's missing the x squared altogether. Okay, so those are just some examples. Here are a couple more that don't necessarily look like they're in the right format. Now keep in mind, you decide what you copy. So at this point, if you don't feel the need to copy every single part of this table, that's fine. Don't copy every part of this table. Uh, so in each of these, they don't quite look like an equation in standard form, so we have an explanation here of how to simplify it so it's in standard form, and then be able to identify that a, b, and c. 
Um, for example, we could be moving all of the terms to the left-hand side. That helps. Or we could expand. In other words, that, that word expand right there is referring to the distributive property. That's referring to the distributive property. Um, undo the brackets, which again, distributive property, and move the 5 to the left of the side of the equal sign. And there you go, you get this. So in each of these cases, you have a situation where you can make it look like it's in standard form so that you can see that quadratic equation better. This is an example of a quadratic function right here, uh, right up here at the um, top of the page, right here. And the related equation would look something like this. So there's the function f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Remember, and, and it, it really doesn't matter what they actually are for this particular one, but remember that a, b, and c are um, numbers. They are real numbers in this situation. Most of the time, um, they're going to be integers, um, unless you're dealing with like an application problem where they might see a decimal or a fraction. Um, and there's a related equation to that function. What does that look like? There we have it. The related equation to that function is 0 equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And the reason these two are significant, the reason that they are related, is that the solutions of the equation, the solutions to this, are actually the x-intercepts of the function. And it's important to recognize that the place where the x-intercepts happen, that's where y equals 0. Remember that f of x is the same thing as y, so that's where f of x would equal 0. And look right here. See how we have the 0 in the place of the f of x. So you can actually find the solutions to a quadratic equation by graphing, and that's something we'll do with the calculator in class, because you can find those solutions by graphing. Um, but in general, there are lots of ways to find the solutions to a quadratic equation. The solutions to a quadratic equation... Um, are where it's equal to zero, that's what we were just referring to here, and there are usually two. Most of the time it's two, you can have what's called a double root, which is basically the same root happening twice, um, and we will see that in class. We'll do a few examples, especially with the calculator. The roots, the solutions, and the zeros are all the same thing. Solutions, roots, and zeros, all the same thing. They, um, they are all interchangeable terms, and those x-intercepts are those solutions, roots, and zeros. There are three basic ways, three different ways other than graphing. We just said we can graph them, but there are three ways on paper that you can find solutions to a quadratic equation. You can do number one, which is factor the quadratic equation. We'll do that next video. You can learn how to complete the square. We'll do that in three videos. And then finally, you can use the quadratic formula. We're going to do that this video. And here is your good old quadratic formula, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Uh, and if you are feeling froggy, you can sing it to the tune of Pop Goes the Weasel. Negative B plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. It's goofy, but it'll help you remember it. Okay, so here's an example. 5X squared plus 6x plus 1. So let's start by making sure we know how to identify the parts of this particular um, quadratic equation. So a, b, and c. Take a second, write them in. If you have 5, 6, and 1, then you were paying attention. Now I'm going to take my quadratic formula, I'm going to set it up, x equals the opposite of b, or negative b, plus or minus, square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, all over 2a. Okay, so negative b plus or minus, square root of 36 minus 20, all over 10, Oop. negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 16, oh, that's convenient, all over 10. So that's negative 6 plus 4 over 10, and it's negative 6 minus 4, over 10. You should remember that we use the plus or minus because it gives us the two different solutions for this particular quadratic equation. Yes, a quadratic equation having degree of 2 has two solutions. So to finish this off, negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2, so negative 1 fifth would be one solution. And negative 6 minus 4 is negative 10, over 10 is negative 1, 
And there's our two solutions for our quadratic equation using the quadratic formula. And we'll see where other places where we actually need the quadratic formula in what we're learning in the coming classes. Okay, now this thing called the discriminant. The discriminant right here, b squared minus 4ac, it's part of the quadratic formula. So if you look at the quadratic formula, and here is that quadratic formula again, just to stick that in there real quick. Just to point this out again, or, or to point this out, I shouldn't say again, just to point it out, that b squared minus 4ac, that's the insides of that radical sign. That's the inside of that radical sign. So when we're looking at the discriminant, we're talking about the part of the quadratic formula that's in the radical sign. Oh, I forgot to change it. Hold on. Sorry about that. We're talking about the insides of the radical sign. Now, depending on what the result of the inside of that radical sign is, it will actually determine what kind of solutions the quadratic equation actually has. So when you look at that discriminant, you can discriminate, oh, that's goofy, between possible types of answers. If b squared minus 4ac is positive, or in other words, if b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, you get two real solutions, two solutions that are real numbers. When it is 0, so when b squared minus 4ac equals 0, you get exactly one real solution. That means both answers are the same, and that's what we call a double root. That's what we call a double root, and that's some example we will look at um, in class. And then finally, when b squared minus 4ac is negative, that means we get a negative inside a radical sign. So, for example, in the problem we just did, that would be like saying we end up with a negative 16 in the radical sign. Well, that's new, and that's coming up in a couple classes. That's going to be a complex solution, a complex number. So I went ahead and put this question here from the Regents Prep site, and we're going to go ahead and give these a shot using the discriminant. So for the first one, we have b squared minus 4ac. So b in this case, I don't see a linear term, so b is 0. Minus 4 times a, and then c. And remember that if this comes out greater than 0, we know we have two real solutions. So 0 minus 4 times 1 minus 9, so that's like negative 4 times negative 9, 36. This one has two real solutions. Next one, again, b squared minus 4ac. So b here is negative 1, because it's negative x, minus 4 times a times c. Well, that's going to come out to 1 minus 4, or negative 3, which definitely makes this one uh, a situation where you have complex solutions. And yes, two of them. Next one, b squared minus 4ac, we end up with 0, because it's 4 minus 4, and that definitely does equal 0. So for this particular one right here, that means you only have one solution, one real solution. Oh, I forgot to put real, hold on. One real solution. Okay, and then look at that last one. I'm completely out of space, so I'll go up here. So b squared, again, we don't have a b. We don't have a b. All right, so 0 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1, negative 1. So c here is negative 1. So minus 4 times minus 1 is a positive 4. Again, it's positive. Therefore, this one right here has two real solutions. Well, I know this is hideously messy. I'm sure your notes are much prettier. But that gives you a better idea of how to use the discriminant. Let's do one more. When, uh, when you see, okay, so look, look at this one. We have 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. Pause it. Copy that equation down. Pause it. Find the discriminant and try to determine your answer. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing so that you can see the correct answer. Did you get a discriminant of 0? Because I did. And that means that the nature of the roots, let's look at the choices here. If I got a zero, it tells us up here you get one real solution. So are there solutions that we have real, rational, and unequal? Are they real, rational, and equal? Are they not real and complex, or are they real, irrational, and unequal? 
Well, we can definitely cross out one of them. They're not complex because we did not get a number that is um, less than zero. So the confusion now is are they irrational or are they rational? Well, the other thing we know is that we got zero. That means we have just one real solution, and that means that you can say we have two of them, that we have like a double root, but that they're equal. Therefore, the only possible answer is this one. Now, to distinguish between the rational and irrational part, well, then that means we have to look at what kind of number we get inside the radical sign. So if I had gotten, for example, a perfect square inside the radical sign, like a, a 25, that would contribute to having rational solutions because that is a, a rational number itself. But had I gotten square root of 27, that would give us irrational solutions. And we're going to see more of that as we learn how to complete the square, etc. Okay. All right, kids, well, that's basically going to wrap it up for the quadratic equations. So you had a bunch of definitions. We had some basic ideas on what quadratic equations are going to be like. We're going to start getting into factoring in our next video. Uh, we're going to look at the complex number system, finally. It's been like three years in the making that you, some of you have not really wanted to learn this, but you know you're going to learn this. And then um, we have, um, what was the other thing that we have coming? completing the square. That's the other one. So we have three big things coming up. This video wasn't too, too bad. I hope it doesn't end up too long. And all right, guys, I'm going to see you in class.